welcome as well. I'm glad you're all here. Um, I'm going to start with this, I think. One of the things I get questions about a lot is so who's Collins? Because as you know, we are a, a proud heritage of companies. I think 17 major companies have come together since 2012. It's, it's companies you know. It's Hamilton Sunstrand. It's Goodrich Aerospace. It's Rockwell Collins. Uh, it's Big Aerospace. And one of the things I'm particularly proud of and, and missioned with is how do you take the capabilities of all these businesses and not only serve the customer, become more sustainable. And one of the things that we do is build from a very strong base. And so we're shaping this business into what I call the full potential. And what I'm going to talk about here is just think about what Collins is working from after decades of pioneering leadership across all those companies that I just mentioned. Part of that is you know, we are the leading supplier of systems and connectivity solutions in both commercial and military segments. And we invest really to play across both those segments in an efficient way. Um, you'll see on the chart here, one of the things that, that really has resulted over the decades of our leadership in systems is we have over 70,000 airplanes that are equipped with our equipment. And we have an installed base that's valued about $120 billion, just commercial alone, not even counting uh, the defense side. And, and I say that from a sustainability discussion because that gives us a tremendous base to work from as you think about bringing new solutions back into not just waiting for a new clean sheet airplane, but how do you bring new solutions today that create some level of sustainability benefit? So we'll talk about that as we go forward. And I'm really excited about not only across Collins doing that, but with with within RTX, with Shane as well as we're talking about some of those examples. And one of the things that I'll just mention to you before we get kicked off here, and as you think about Collins, we take a lot of effort to take capabilities from more than one business for how we invest. And so we've established, and we can talk about it probably more in depth later, but think about seven strategic, I'll call them market-focused strategic initiatives. And they're all sustainability-focused as much as they are engineering, technical, and differentiation-focused, killing both two birds with one stone, so to speak. And the way to do that is really ensure that things like more automated flight, where you have more efficiency uh, from an autonomy perspective, hybrid electric, uh, is using data and analytics to create more trajectory-based and efficient flight operations, and of course, maintenance. And this is one that's usually underplayed. The cost to the airline, both in terms of cost, operational impact, and just greenhouse gas emissions as a result of inefficient flight or disruption is extremely costly. And so the opportunity to invest against those strategic initiatives across two or more Collins businesses, or with Pratt as an example, we're gonna give you just a few examples across three areas that have created tremendous benefit and opportunity for us to contribute directly to those sustainability goals that we talk about. Uh, and I'll just highlight a couple as we get started, and I'll just take one here, and I'll get to them in a, little, in a few remarks on a little bit later. But think about three categories. One is the first is hybrid electric. And so we'll get into some of the work that we're doing there and making investments, building on what was the Hamilton Sunstrand and now what we call my business power and controls, creating new solutions that enable uh, a combination of hybrid electric for more efficient flight. The second one that you don't think about as much that I think is really important is structural solutions. Uh, we just formulated a new business within Collins called Advanced Structures. It's a combination of our mechanical systems business and our aero structures business really good expertise on structures. We used to acquire a business called Dutch Thermoplastics. When you think about what thermoplastics can do in heavy weight uh, removal off the aircraft, whether it's a casing, a seat, frame, uh, a number of ways, every pound you take off the airplane provides a benefit in terms of redu a reduction in carbon emissions. And so we're really excited about some of the structural capabilities we have to provide benefit in that way. And one, in my background, happens, which happens to be digital, that I'm particularly excited about is the usage of data and analytics. The airspace is increasingly dense. Aircraft really are a note on a network. And if you could use the capabilities on those aircraft to not only use data to operate an individual aircraft more efficiently, I think the real payoff is the opportunity to let that network of aircraft work in that airspace much more efficiently. As well as, and how that aircraft becomes more intelligent in both in how you manage it operationally and how you maintain it from a maintenance perspective and data and our acquisition of FlyOver in 2021 was really a step change in terms of horsepower for how you use data to make a difference. We're very aircraft-centric people because of what we do, but you gotta broaden the aperture into the airspace if you really wanna think about having an impact from a sustainability perspective. So with that, we'll give you some deeper insights to some of those technology advancements we're gonna get into. Uh, and with that, Shane's gonna start, I think, with some propulsion systems discussion. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Steve. Shane, I'll just give you a little, little 
very uh, shallow dive here a little bit, so I'm not going to go too deep. Uh, but the, one thing so I'll just highlight to get, to get started is back to my strategic initiatives comment. You know, really a couple of key areas that if you think about the investments we have, we spend about $4 billion a year at Collins from an investment perspective, and almost every one of those has a sustainability dimension to it. And so when you think about how do you differentiate for your customers and solve their problems, can also be more sustainable. I'll also give you three examples of how we do that and bring some of those to life going forward. And first, I'll start with this hybrid electric, and I'll just dive and compliment a few things that Shane said. And you think about well, creating more efficient flight. Um, you know, Shane said we're working on some propulsion systems that make us more sustainable in that hybrid electric, all electric propulsion systems. And I'll give you some examples. But before I do, I'll also say the same thing. We're, we're developing systems and components that are also enabling 100% SAF ready engines. And we're also researching and investing even further ahead in things like hydrogen, where we're looking at propulsion concepts and making sure all of our systems are compatible with future, maybe next generation capabilities as well. This past Monday, we announced that uh, we successfully tested a one megawatt electric motor with a fully rated power. Think about the highest rated industry leading power density and efficiency from a power perspective, and Collins is bringing that. And as part of that Dash 8 uh, hydroelectric flight demonstrator that Shane mentioned, we're talking about the thermal engine at Pratt, plus the, the power that we bring from a hydroelectric perspective with Collins, bring 30% fuel efficiency, which is a kind of step change that really makes a big difference when you talk about making efficient flight. A couple things I brought, and I'm gonna read through a few of these, because that would be interesting for you to know. One of the things we take tremendous pride in, 40% of Collins employees are outside the United States. And so we take a lot of pride in how we actually invest globally to create next generation technologies. So we've been awarded seven or eight recent uh, opportunities to continue to invest around the world. And I'm just going to give you a snippet of a few here and we'll let's share these with you, but I think they're really powerful. First, clean aviation. Uh, as part of the aviation switch project, we were, we're going to perform a, a demonstration of this integrated hybrid electric powertrain for Pratt and Whitney on the GTF. Uh, earlier this year, we were also selected on clean aviation for HACAP to um, uh, take a program to develop new high voltage, in this case, greater than 500 kilowatt electric power distribution to convert those technologies with our European partners. So we're doing that partnership here in Europe. There's a clean hydrogen project called Coco Light, where we're designing, developing, and manufacturing, as I said, thermoplastics earlier, composites that are compatible with liquid storage for hydrogen. And then SESAR last week, we announced that uh, we've been selected for air traffic management projects, one called Jarvis, where it's actually using AI as a basis for creating enhanced safety and security in pilot operations. And then lastly, I mentioned we're also working in, in Canada and in Holland with, uh, uh, with it's called CREOC for uh, aviation transition projects. So you just think about those and there's more, but it's really good breadth of technology development in a variety of capacities that advance our systems. The second I mentioned earlier that I think is interesting is the structural technologies that we're using to create weight savings. And I talked about Dutch thermoplastics and the kind of 30% weight savings we can create in the usage of those, you think about seat frames. But there's another aspect to it. It's about not only being energy efficient, but think about recyclability of interiors on aircraft. You think about the ability from those types of materials to have more applicability, not only in their light weight, but their, their ability to be more efficient from a recycling perspective. Uh, and then we actually get into the noise. There's a noise aspect of sustainability we don't talk about as much. With our cell designs, we're talking about reducing not only weight, but obviously the, the noise profile of those aircraft to become more fuel efficient and uh, uh, noise conscious here. And thirdly, and the one that I'll talk about that I'm particularly excited about on top of those is the way we're using insights for data to improve airline operations from an efficiency perspective. I'm gonna one of the things I'll tell you, I've been in this industry for almost 30 years, and what I've found is that data and analytics have been talked about for decades, right? <laughs> and, and I think it's been kind of a, uh, an array of companies servicing niche aspects. There's really been no one providing kind of an end-to-end -end connected solution, and Collins is changing that. Whether you're talking systems on the airplane, the connectivity that gets the data off the aircraft on the ground or in the air, and then the analytics to make it tar uh, smart, where you take intelligence and insight, and make it translatable so someone can make a decision and use it in a way that's beneficial for the operator. So I think there's some interesting examples of now, as I said, with our acquisition of flight where it starts to really activate a catalyst of that data in new ways. And so I'll give you a, a couple of neat examples that we think about reliability and dispatch operations. Um, one other thing I'll add to that is just the connectivity. You might have you might have read that we've realigned some of the parts of Raytheon across Collins and different parts of RTX. One of the moves we made is 
we know within Collins we already had the airing network, which as you know is 75 million messages per day and five nines are a liability to connect aircraft. But Raytheon Heritage brings air traffic management, two thirds of the global air traffic management covered around the globe, and that was a compliment to that. So when I talked about earlier, that node of a network and making airplanes more efficient in the airspace, you've got the connectivity component and the air traffic management component as really conduits to really support that efficiency. So we're gonna capitalize on that from an end-to-end -end capability along with those data analytics that I talk about. So um, if I just get into a couple of the areas that I think are interesting in particular is a flight path optimization and a great example of how we're doing that. We're running trials today with airlines that can take a piece of software we've written. It takes data from the aircraft, arrival time requirements, weather situations, so you start thinking about the opportunity to get a request for improved flight routing, more efficient flight routing. We demonstrated fuel savings of one to two percent. At the surface you may say, what's well, one to two percent? You extrapolate that into the billions of dollars of, of uh, or billions of gallons, excuse me, of fuel that's burned every year, it's a significant impact in terms of carbon emission reduction, in terms of metric tons of reduction per year across aviation. Some other issues of data and the information is, I don't know if you know this, but contrails actually contribute to greenhouse gas emissions and or creation. And so the ability to use systems that dynamically know for all of those routed aircraft where those might be and dynamically routed away has an impact as well. And we can share some information about the types of impact those might have. And the last one I'll, I'll just share with you is we're really taking data back to the data and the connectivity aspect in a couple of ways that create some benefits that just connect some dots for you. We use all those systems I talked about, that $120 billion of installed base on virtually every flying airplane. Uh, and we actually use our knowledge of those systems to collect the data on those, uh, that knowledge of the systems plus the data of their usage. And we have a predictive maintenance piece of software called the Sentia. There's 150 predictive models of flying on thousands of airplanes that every day help them operate more efficiently and be maintained more efficiently. When you couple the flight aware acquisition where we use not only flight aware data, but the analytics intelligence, the horsepower of that business to use internal and external data to create efficiency is really, really powerful. Let me just give you a really a very simple example, but I think it's really interesting, is we're conducting flight trials with airlines, and of all things, it's predicted brake usage. Now, believe it or not, uh, when you use the carbon-carbon to create brakes, it's a, quite a manufacturing process to go do that, and what happens is from, a, from an operator's perspective, um, unscheduled maintenance on brakes is a big deal. So what happens is you either create brakes manufacturing wise you didn't need to because you had life left, or you didn't get them quick enough and you create an AOG situation where you can interrupt uh, operations. So it's costly from an operational perspective, it's costly from a greenhouse gas emission perspective. And in this predictive tool, we demonstrated in these trials with airlines that they could actually save a million dollars because of the more precise predictive usage of maintenance where it's not unscheduled, operations is better, and on top of that, we're producing less brakes, which creates about 20 metric tons per airline of greenhouse gas savings. So what's really cool, maybe this is a takeaway for me, you take these types of predictive tools that I'm talking about, and the systems on the airplane and the connectivity that I've talked about, you extrapolate that across the industry, you're talking about a 30% reduction in unscheduled maintenance at an industry level. And on top of that, not only is there a 20% improvement in the cost associated with that for airlines, but the greenhouse gas improvements of just operating more efficiently is tremendous. And so what with, as you can see on the chart here, that those types of capabilities, the technologies for lighter weight, more connectivity solutions have a combined 14% contribution. Relatively small in the total because of just what they can do, but here's what's neat. They can be brought to the existing fleet. Many times we talk about that new next generation aircraft that's going to be 10%, 20%, or the engine efficiency we talk about with hybrid electric with 30%. That's fantastic. But the complement to that is bringing something back in the existing fleet. And these capabilities, their software driven, <coughs> analytic driven, don't require to wait for that. So those are some of the neat things we're working on from a technology investment perspective and how we're applying them to tomorrow's fleet, but also today. So that. Graham, I'll turn it back to you for 